any case, uh, as I was saying, I don't know how long this is going to go. But there apparently is a true ending. I haven't opened the guides because this is going to be spoilers and I'm going to finish the chapter first. But there is another ending to be found. And I'm going to finish the game that I have now before I continue. Alright, chapter 7. Dear buds. Huh. The song is. That that's not what is not control. Hold on. I forgot to do this. I cannot anymore. Well then, keyboard it is. Ah. Good morning. Did you get some good sleep? No, I was just spacing out. I couldn't sleep at all. I'd actually be more surprised if I could, given what happened. I know, right? Avenge Michiho time, yeah. Oh yeah, are you hungry? I made a light breakfast using the stuff I found in your kitchen. Stuff I'm not asking you first. Let me move the microphone again a little bit. Uh, looks like Dorio made some breakfast. You do know I'm sussing you out pretty hard right now, Doryu. Um, I'll eat it. Thanks, Doryu. I'll eat it. No problem. Sorry that is all I can do. But at least I can help in a small way. I eat brunch together with Doryu. I've been in a very bad shape due to a combination of lack of sleep and fatigue. Giving Chewie this food is a chore for me, but I manage, for Doryu. And lastly, I force myself to go down some coffee. Question. Did Doryu drink the coffee? Doryu stayed in the guest room last night. God damn it, this is why I'm using the controller. I figured things would turn out bad if she wasn't at her dorm in the morning, when I asked her about it. She said she'd already received permissions to stay out by Lee, by lying that one of her relatives had collapsed. It's a lie that only someone who had the trust of the dorm manager would be able to get away with. By the way, yesterday you said you found an old book in the clock tower. What happened to the book? Oh. I pick up the old book that's been sitting on my desk. It's just an ordinary book, written in ordinary black, letter, black letters. There's no sign of the word kill in bright red text like I saw yesterday. Must have been another one of the departed's illusions just for me. Can you read it? I can skim through it. But it'd be hard for me to fully understand without time and research. <clears throat> that was early. But it's related to the departed, so we got no choice but to read it, right? Shall we try our best to decipher it? My grades in classic literature are pretty good. I'm confident it can be of some help. Let's give it a shot then. Dorio and I put our heads together and tried to make some sense of the old book. However, my eight-old's unwearied mind is unable to focus and I don't feel like I'm making much progress. I bet Dorio is feeling the same. She almost does us off in her seat. 
The spiral you'll... Mm. Despite our last and stellar efforts, we managed to learn some new things. In the past, M Town apparently used to worship two gods. The first one was Lord Mushigami, who is mentioned in the local lore, and the other was Lord Kabigami. Furthermore, M Town had a special wedding ceremony tied to these two gods. Kabigami. And the name of the ceremony was The Departed's Wedding. Oh, there it is. I look at the clock and realize it's already evening. I uh, probably didn't show up because I disabled overlay on OBS. I don't know. Out of the blue, my phone rings. Pains of guilt hit me, and I hesitate to pick up the phone. Maybe it's the police. Who knows, maybe Mitchell's body was found and the cops received a report. Someone might have seen us together when we were, <clears throat> when we were heading to M-Town shop. You're not gonna pick it up? No, I will. I have no choice but to face the music. Hello? It is me, Conway. Come to the school immediately. I will broke no disagreements. That's an order from your client. Conway's strong words are matched by an unusually strong assertive tone of voice. Sure thing. That is quite certain though. Can you at least tell me what's important? I believe you must already have an idea. It's about Kirukawa. Well, I can feel my heart pounding loudly. Kinokawa. I'd like to hear the details directly from you. I'll be waiting here. Make it quick. Mr. Yashiki, you look really pale. Headmaster wants to talk about Michio with me. What? You're kidding. But how? Her course should have disappeared. I'll be going to Konoe Hara Academy. Then I will also... You stay here, Dorio. Hmm. The situation will only get worse if you show up at school when you're supposed to be staying at your ill relative's place today. Understood. Be very careful, Mr. Yashiki. I drag my exhausted body to the garage. <laughs> shit. What should I do? It's 23 minutes. I can say shit. Maybe I fooled all you. But the moment, <clears throat> but the moment Mr. Connor said the name, you know, power. Excuse me. Uh, yeah. Calm your ass down, Yashiki. I don't know what's gonna happen. Keep your head in the game. I slide in the car and take another deep breath. And then I slowly turn the ignition key. Now he's inside the house. Hmm. The chime rings when I arrive at Konohara Academy. It seems like I arrived just as class ended. The school looks the same as always, with no cops or media in sight. Which means her corpse hasn't been found yet. Why does Mr. Konoe want to talk to me about Michiho then? Hmm? What was that? The classes having just ended, students begin to exit the new building. The new building? However, everyone looks exhausted. 
I don't feel any of the usual joy that you expect from students at the end of the school day. But more disturbing than that. Huh. Strange looking apparitions are roaming around the school. Nobody has noticed their presence though. I doubt they can even see them. The number of apparitions I can count is roughly equal to the number of students. It's not just one or two. And the apparitions all look the same, like a spirit with a giant insectoid legs and a human face. The spirits are simply clinging to the students without doing anything. Though I have a feeling that it must be the reason the student looks so pale and lethargic. I can understand that they are being possessed by the spirits. Why is it happening now all of a sudden? Somehow, I managed to restrain myself from making any surprise noises. Attracting attention here would only make me look suspicious. First of all, I need to get an idea of what the situation is. What in the world? All the students and teachers have passed on my way of the infirmary. Every single one of them had a spirit clinging to their back. Wait, is it the same for me too? I walk towards the wash bin in the corner of the infirmary. And when I look in the mirror, there are no spirits clinging on my back. I'm the only one who doesn't have one. Is this all Sir the Pilot's doing? What should I do? My mind becomes a thrilling miasma of confused thoughts and other emotions. Even if I were to try and explain the situation to them, I'm the only one who can see the spirits, so nobody would be a would, ugh, would ever be able to believe me. Ah shit. This is bad. Completely out of ideas. But staying here is pointless. I should make a move. Mr. Kono is waiting for me in the faculty room. Maybe I'll s well maybe as well get this over with. Um yeah, okay. When I enter the faculty room, Mr. Kono is already there with an exhausted look on his face. There's a spirit clinging to his back, though he doesn't seem to notice either. Oh, God. You finally arrived. Let's get on with it already. My body is feeling even more leaden than it was yesterday. I do recall the emission feeling worn down yesterday as well. Is this fat if this fatigue has been caused by these vengeful spirits, that means he may already been possessed back then. Plus the fact that I can see the spirits means that the body is getting even stronger. What's wrong? Is she like you not quite looking at me? Uh nothing. There are things it's better off not knowing. I just keep this quiet and not allow him in any more than I need to. So what's this about in the cover? Oh, right. She left the door yesterday and hasn't returned. Do you happen to know anything about that? Um, well, none of this will lead anywhere. I'm gonna have to close my window actually. That is not dark. That is out of my control. How to do with that? I mean, I do know how to get rid of it. Unfortunately, no matter what professional I call, they don't answer.
I don't know. That is not... God dang it, this is why I use a controller. Well, I got no idea what happened to her. After the promise I made with Doryu, this is the only way I can possibly respond. Alright. Just remember, if you cause some sort of incident, it will reflect poorly upon me as well, since I'm the one who hired you. But this is a matter of student safety we're talking about here. If you're hiding something from me, I won't forgive you. Okay. Should I be honest with him, since it involves mutual safety? Even if, if I was though, it's too late already. Telling him won't help anyone's safety. If we truly don't know anything about it, then we'll handle it from here. I suppose we should contact the family. This type of situation frankly a struggle without Sakamoto around to handle them. Hmm? Is Ms. Sakamoto not here today? Yes, and she didn't even call in. It's very unlike her. I wouldn't say anything, she just wasn't feeling well. Everyone falls ill sometimes. But her absence has been troubling me since I found this thing on my desk. Here, read it. He has me five sheets of paper bundled together with a paper clip. Looks like a write up to me. Write up? Huh. As soon as I read the first page, I groan. It's a basically a formalized complaint against Kazuo Yashiki, the temporary teacher. The paper is a laundry list of reasons why I'm unfit to be a teacher at this hallowed institution. And to no one's surprise, my unnatural close relationship with two members of the student council is my primary concern. Who cares about all that? Read the last page. What is this now? Fifth page is different from the others. The other pages were written with a stern, diligent hand, but this page is inked with sloppy, disconcerting handwriting. The voice keeps hanging in my head. They keep calling and calling and they don't stop. I will soon die, die, die. There is only one way to save my life. Go to the small room deep in the darkness. Godness, goodness at long last. Fox Mushibami Kabigami. Hmm. Okay. What the hell is this? Mushigami and Kabigami. It's the names of the two gods mentioned in the old M Town, M -town book. This can't be a coincidence. How could Sakamoto have written this? A voice echoing in her head, guided them a step closer to death. Reminds me of something. That's right. Izumi said something similar before he died. But it's too late now. I messed up. The departed hates me. I keep hearing a voice saying die, die, die in my head. I've got no fucking time left. I don't wanna die. I'll definitely kill Hanako at the music room. Perhaps. Sakamoto is already being targeted by the departed. But why would Sakamoto... Why, you're asking? Don't you even realize it? You keep asking why, 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 always why? Isn't it your entire job to investigate that? It's because of your slowness and incompetence that we have those mounting casualties. Sekono raises his voice and glowers at me. Such a normally mild-tempered person lashing out that much. Just because of the curse. But he's just that stress. Perhaps lives are the st people's lives are at stake here. We had students perish already. Don't use your unprofessionalism as an excuse. Results are all that matter. It's entirely your fault that things have turned out this way. Have I made myself clear, Yashki? Uh. I'm 
I don't know. Uh, apologize? Yeah, for what? Apologize your incompetence? Oh, people are dying. Um, protest? Protest? How are you gonna protest against this? It's not my fault. Uh, it isn't, but... He's not gonna see that. Remain silent? That's not gonna help anybody. Protest. Oh, please, you don't nothing but run your mouth with precious little show to show, to show for it. Are you not aware of your responsibilities? Are you not ashamed of yourself? That didn't help. Is that a fuel to the fire? Mr. Connor is more pissed than he was before. Anything I say now will be pointless. Resolve this cage and bring me a report that says everything is done. If you know what's good for you, you get your hindquarters moving and get some results. Okay. The score will be closing shortly. Our students, please properly package the school grounds for today. As much as I want to inspect the clock tower, the door is locked in the evening. I waited informally until the sun sets. What if I go somewhere else? It's time to head out. Will the door to the clock tower be open? A knock. Who's here at this hour? Bug! Uh, I mean, uh, Doryu. Stay Ashki. Doryu enters the room, a spirit clinging, clinging to her back. I wasn't there back at Kujo Mansion. Didn't appear once she came to Konohara Academy. Is it because of me? One mysteries are piling up, and all of them are being solved. Why are you here, Doryu? I snuck in since I thought I'd be the only one here at this time. I'm a real delinquent now. Why did you come here? <laughs> You're gonna go to the clock tower, right? I'll tag along. Oh, I can't let you. I'm not going to have a repeat of what happened to Michiko. I didn't ask for your permission. I'm tagging along whether you like it or not. This incident isn't just about you, it's also affecting me. Do you? Alright. The first time she's a party member. Still in the opening. How are you feeling, Dorio? My body feels somewhat heavy. Maybe it's from lack of sleep. But it's fine. I can go. I make sure I won't hold you back. Fine, just don't push yourself too hard. I don't know where to look. <laughs> Let's keep quiet about the vengeful spirit. It's not like we can do anything about it anyway. I'm still not convinced of a few things, but... No. I don't know. She has a bug on her back. She doesn't. What was the owl? I got that. Your head is loose. Your head is loose. Huh. That's not the impression you have on her picture. Hmm? Hmm. The light illuminating the ground is reflecting of something. I bend over and pick it up. It's the tooth. Huh. Just right here. Alright. A massive statue of the Guardian Fox stands here. It's darker and gives off the impression that it has been here for quite some time. No praying today. Alright. So I find myself here once again. A clock tower with a clock that has stopped moving. Inside this tower, Micho is. Let's go, Mr. Yashki. Yeah. The 
the doors have opened. That means we can go inside. Makes me feel like this is the departure's work. Are you sure about this, Toryu? I can hear the sounds of Doryu trying to steal herself. What's going through her mind right now? Tension? Or is it fear? In any case, her gaze is fixed forward. I'm ready. Alright, let's go. Ugh. She's still here. I know, she's gone. There's no trace of Mitchell's corpse in the clock tower. There's nothing left on the floor. There's not a trace of blood, not a giant insect. Mr. Yashki. I knew it. Did the party dispose of a corpse? I guess so, yeah. Micho. Stumbling on her feet, Dory walks towards the area where Michiko collapsed. Bug? Bug. She then turns around to me and begins to speak. I have a memorial now, of all places. Michiko was the best friend I ever had. She might have seemed selfish to you, but she was actually a really caring person. Even when she decided to be a student council vice president. She only did it to help me out. She didn't even really want to be a student council member. Were you two friends for a long time? Yes, we were friends even before we entered kindergarten. Our parents are close. Both of us are only children, so we became friends quickly. Because both of us wanted to have siblings, we often played sisters. I'd only play the stubborn, fussy older sister, while she's the sloppy yet kinder younger sister. She continues rambling until her voice gradually fades. I bet even Doryu herself has no idea what she's saying right now. It's not a time for action. It's time to just be there for her and listen. And not silently. I shared everything with Michiko. My hobbies, future dreams, the troubles I hid from other people. Even my crush. Listen to me, Mr. Yashki. Michiko loved you. What? Did you realize her feelings? She did make it obvious. Yes. I... Vaguely. I knew it. She's usually pretty discreet when it comes to showing her feelings. Is she? Wow. If that is being discreet... Okay. It's only been a few weeks since we first met. That means irrelevance. It's all about the events that made her fall for you. What events? Didn't you compliment her hair before? She believed it was fate that there was someone who could see her curse other than the two of us. But I'm a teacher and she's a student. So you think that's weird? But you're not a teacher, Mr. Yashki. Yeah, it's not very common. That doesn't mean it's impossible. Five years ago at the school, there was a tragic love story between a teacher and his students. She must be referring to Ray Cashman, Sosuke Hirose from the art club. She probably heard it from Michel. Love can bloom regardless of your situation. It doesn't matter whether the love is accepted or not. Love, huh? I might be insensitive at times, but I think I understand the kind of love Doryu is talking about. It's a feeling young girls often consider precious. However, 
I am an adult and a teacher. A bit a temporary one. But I might think they have adult feelings. Michio and Dori are children at the end of the day. It's my responsibility to keep them that way. I can't accept those feelings, Toryu. Is that so? <laughs> I'm relieved to hear that. It's still the same as ever. A teacher who harbors romantic feelings for the students is the worst. Toryu gives me a mischievous smile. Was this some kind of a test? It's not like I want you to accept her feelings. I just want you to recognize Michio's love. I think that's what she wants to. Toryu. Her love remained a, a bud until the end. You never had a chance to bloom. But now that you finally realize her feelings, I believe maybe her soul can rest a bit easier. Thank you, Mr. Yashiki. Wasn't she eaten though? What are you gonna do now? Find out who the departed is, obviously. In order to do that, we need to decipher the old book we found here. So let's go back to the infirmary. Why did we come here? I'm sure we can decipher it if we both give it our best. It's not like we have a choice anyway. However, even with both of us, it will take some time to decipher the content of the book. I wish there was a better way to do this. Mannequin? Man man mannequin. Oh. Open the door and inspect other spots besides the upper shelf where the old book was stored. Everything is basically junk, like a moldy mirror, a white mask, and some worn, eaten fabric. If only they've been preserved properly, they might be valuable antiques. Find a familiar item among the junk. It's a tooth. I can go up. By the way, Doryu, you said you and Michio saw an altar here, whether that was placed in a clock tower, right? But I don't see an altar anywhere. Ah, uh, yes, I'm surprised myself. There was definitely an altar when we came here. This is strange, but they're hallucinating or something. I don't think that's the case, because the altar was also mentioned in the school newspaper. It's absurd to think they were how hallucinating. In that case, it may have been something caused by the departed. No one knows which is the real clock tower. The clock tower we're in now, or the one you saw before with the altar. I used the item inside here to the item. Which item? Mr. Yashki. I have to focus on your investigation as we'll all fail. Yeah, I know. There's a small item lying on the corner of the box. It's a tooth. He used the item. Which item? The flashlight? What? What item? Do I have something? Uh. Oh god, flashbang. Uh. Favorite novel? Not really, no. Which item did you use, Yashki? The crowbar? The crowbar is gone. The, um. The range? Oh god. Loud. Very good. Hey, Ashki. Hmm? 
A familiar voice greets me when I enter the infirmary. Oh, it's you. So actually here, huh? Credit where credit is due. You are right, Hag. Ah, you can always trust my intuition. Master. Yes, Walker. I called Kojo mention, but no one answered. I got worried, Yashki. Ah, you caused us trouble. You can see spirits on their backs too. Are these spirits attaching themselves to everyone who enters the school grounds, not just those who attend Konoha Academy? Judging by the awful look in your face, something must have happened. Spill it. Now. And uh, about that. Don't do that, Mr. Ashki. If you tell them, you. You must be Doryu, the student council president. Please trust us. Yashki is your friend. We won't betray him. Yashki is already a jumbo pile of is a, is already a jumbo pile of misdemeanors. Trespassing, theft, traffic violation, some more theft. I can't count them out on my fingers. I'm not gonna be surprised by anything that comes out of his damn mouth, so stop wasting my time and spit it out already. I killed someone yesterday. <laughs> Fine, I'll talk. I want to bring an end to this case no matter what it costs me. I need your help. I tell them everything that happened last night. And I don't hide a single thing. The departed's wrath, the old book we found at the clock tower, the facts that I killed Michiho, Doryun helping me out, and the spirits I've been seeing on everyone since this morning. Oh, you finally brought that up! You must be kidding me. This thing could kill someone. Don't blame him for that. He was controlled by the departed. He sent you or not, mother is still murdered. Article 199. A person who kills another person is punished by death penalty or life imprisonment. Or for a definite term of no less than five years. I'd stuff cuffs on you myself I had him with me. Consider. Let me just say one thing. The law only applies if the victim is human. What do you mean by that? Oh, come on, stop being dumb. You know damn well what I mean. There's a definite chance Michio Kinoka was to depart it. What are you going on about? There is no way Michio was. You think there's no way? She's pretty suspicious to me. Doesn't have a natural attachment and affection for you reminds you of the departed. Please stop. How dare you talk about her love like that? You better watch him out too, Himeko Dori. You're also a suspect. What if you have something in common with the way you approach Yashki? Enough! You're being so cruel. Dori glares at Mashita, her shoulders trembling. He's going to lunge at him at any moment now. Uh, I mean, hmm. Mashta is in wrong, and in a way, I want to see where this goes. But he also not helping right now. Hmm. Remain silent. Silence is always a choice, that doesn't mean it's a good one. Um, I wanna see where this goes. That's enough, oh. That's enough, master. I understand why you're suspicious of them, but she's just a kid. Ah. Ashki, here's my suggestion for you. Investigate Micho Kinokawa. Determine whether or not she was, a she was ready to depart it. But Michu is already... Even if her corpse is gone, the evidence remains. N no... Search her... Oh, search her room. You might find clues about the departed there. Where did she leave? The dormitory near the school. 
She's in the same dorm as you, right? Yes. It's a good thing we have someone who knows about the dorm with us. Will you help us out? Mr. Ashki, are you telling me you suspect Mitchell? Yes. <laughs> no discussion. Sorry. Because we don't know who the departed is, we have to check every lead. Understood. I'll cooperate since I believe she's innocent. Thanks, Toryu. Hey, Ashki. You mentioned seeing vengeful spirits. Yes, in fact, that is also one on your back. I guess this must be why I've been feeling weird ever since yesterday. I wonder if there is only you can see them, because they're the departed's groom. What are they, anyway? The embodiment of the departed's curse, most likely. Might be a result of the transformation, like the red lights, the school. Perhaps they all look the same, because they were born of the same curse. It's not totally impossible, though the fact that the spirits are part human, part insects, definitely raises some question. Considering one of the Japanese characters compromising the name Lord Mushigami means insects, I wonder if there's a connection. The deities of Emta and the Departed, they really might be connected in some way. What will happen if we just let them be? I don't know for certain, but I have a prediction. Those who are possessed by spirits will grow progressively weaker before they eventually die. I've witnessed it several times. No way. So everyone will die at this rate. Is there anything we can do to avoid it? Considering the number of spirits, performing an exorcism is out of the question. Our only hope is to exterminate the leader of the spirits. They departed. They're the cause of this disaster. Once they're gone, everything should go back to normal. Things have gone from worse to horrible at a blazing speed. The damage has spread. But our mission remains unchanged. There's something I'd like to ask you, Asoka. I take the old book from my bag. Can I help us decipher this book? It's a book about M Town, a formerly inhabited area here. Maybe it can also tell us something about the departed. Can you read it? It really well versed in this sort of things. Sure, I'll do my best. I'll try to decipher as much as the book as I can until you all return. Shall we head over to the student's dormitory? It's just across from the bus stop in front of the school. Still the opening? What the hell? How long is this? I promise I'm not cheating. <laughs> New gremlin. Uh, just the school motto, I think. Oh, I'm on the other side. Splendid gate made of bricks, complete with an iron fence. Because of an austere historical atmosphere. The nameplate of the school reads Konohara Academy. I wanted to graduate with Mitchell. Oh, stop it. There's a bench with paint spilling on the corner. Thanks. I even see some crushed bugs on the seats. I wish they cleaned this place. Hmm? What is that? Dodo seems to have noticed something. Something on the ground, near the bench. It's a tooth. Oh, can I take the... Oh. We go along the roads and finally reach the door. But the front door is locked. Not surprising if that's already past curfew. The back door might be open. The door manager is a bit sloppy sometimes. She often forgets to lock the door. Door is right. Back door is open. See? I told you. I'll be in trouble if you get caught. 
Ah, sorry. Fortunately for us, the dormant entrance is empty when we get there. Thank goodness the manager is in here. I thought she'd stay behind with Mitchell's disappearance and all. Looks like she went home at her uh, regular time. Regular. Wow. What a low employee. Shall we look for the key to Mitchell's room? The manager has a double cage, so we'll be fine as long as we find that. Uh, sure. Uh, mail. A roll of mailboxes. Based off the number of mailboxes I see, it's student dormitory is quite big. No notices, elevator. It's the administration office where the manager works. Hmm. Key should be around here. Please wait a minute, I'll take a look. Doryu enters the administration room. I'm the only one in the entrance now. This is bad. If a student happens to come in at this moment, so I'm not going to have any good explanation. Not only did I barge in here without permission, but it's, this is a fem female dormitory. There is no justification for me being here. Come on, get back here soon. My impatience is starting to grow. But then Lori appears, granting my wish. In her hand is a key with a label attached. Found it. It's the key to Mitchell's room. So it's that easy to find, huh? Door shoot is unsafe. Easy access to keys and the back door is even unlocked. The key was in a sturdy case with a combination lock. I only know the combination because Mitchell told me. Why did Mitchell know it? She snooped on the managers on the manager once she was entering it and memorized it. She didn't intend to do anything bad with it though. Probably. Goodness. This should get us into Mitchell's room. Her room is on the fourth floor. Let's take the elevator. But the stairs are right here though. Cool. Otherwise ahead is darkness. Spirit has an elevator, but no. Nah. Lazy ass. It's not a very big one. Probably can only fit four or five people. Tops. I thank God we're, we're only two. Once we arrive on the fourth floor, let Doria lead us down the hallway. We come to a stop in front of the door with the number 402 on it. This is Mitchell's room. The moment Dory opens the door, I duck into the room. Frogs! Frogs! Frogs everywhere! What the hell is this place? <laughs> I turn on the lights to reveal the whole room. Is this a single room? I only see one bed here. I should sort of assume we'll be sharing a room since a student's dormitory. It's not really common, but yes, other rooms here are single rooms. That's good. Hmm. Well, now that I know this room only has a single occupant, that means that anything I see here is a reflection of Mitchell's personality. This doesn't look like a room that a terrifying spirit like the departed will live in. I'm going to see what I can find, just wait here. I shall leave the investigation to you. Frogs everywhere. Not oh, so that plants. That's yes. uncommon. Aside from the small frog decoration, there's also a plastic fish tank on the shelf. Beside it, oh. Because he died on top of a dry stone, his body is completely shriveled up. It's bone dry. Bring the little one. Frog drives away bugs. Ugh. 
I always press down the invades my mind. This isn't the first time I experienced this. A strange voice is speaking to me. Bring the little one. Hmm. Are they telling me to bring this dead frog somewhere? For what reason I wonder to myself. But the voice in my head never gives me an answer. Sitting here and waiting for an answer will get me nowhere. What I need to do is make a decision. And I've always chosen to follow the guidance of the spirit's whisper. Who knows? Maybe this frog has some kind of spiritual power. Yep, I have a frog in my pocket. Why did I check that again? Uh, big frog. Frog calendar. Large poster of a loving frog moan, a frog child. Frog post-it notes, frog calendar, another frog um, aquarium. A small refrigerator for a single person. It's full of frogs. Oh, it's a few sodas inside. Beds. I can check the beds. Why? A manager sits atop a typical pipe bed frame. And there's a stuffed frog doll sitting by the pillow. She only has a light blanket on the beds. You should not get cold at night. Uh, some people are resilient. Don't, don't be judgy. Um, calendar with a frog drawing hanging on the wall. It's already October, but the calendars remain on August. Has she... Odd. Okay. There's a frog-shaped board hanging on the wall. I find two notes on it. One is a note about her raising a frog, and the other is about her summer vacation plans. August 8th, school day. Go to the clock tower with Hime. Must have been the day when she and Dorio discovered the female doll in the clock tower. Hmm. Cool, cool. There's a thin layer of dust on the desk, along with a notebook. Froggy log trees reading on the cover. As the title suggests, it's a not this notebook is all about a frog it seems she was caring for. I see a lot of enthusiastic praise inside, things like, oh my god, so cute or true beauty. There are also some cute drawings that convey her affection towards a pet amphibian. But with no dates mentioned in these entries, it's hard to guess when she wrote these. Other than that, there are a lot of notes about her frog's food. She fed either crickets, flies or earthworms, trying to learn what the frog liked the most. Furthermore, she happily noted how the frog would eat the insects. Hmm... No, oh, so I do wonder why it's full of frogs. She used to be super into frogs before, but at some point her attention switched to bugs. Mm, it's my it's the problem that I've been having actually. Like this doesn't bode well. Hmm. The dresser is most likely filled with clothing. There's a stuffed frog doll on the top. Should I check the drawers too, just in case? I hesitated a bit, but then I realized there are bigger issues than the decor on at, at play here. Inside the drawers are Mitchell's casual clothes. His clothes revealed that she didn't appear to care overly much about fashion, as some of the clothes are very similar to one another. I also inspect the bags just to be sure, but I don't find anything hidden on them. Nope. Then close to the drawer, something falls down on the ground. It's a tooth. Moi say lost souls are often seen in places near spiritual disorders. So why is this thing here then? It's rather curious to find it here, though it is too early to use this evidence against Micho. Even if this dome is cursed, we can't just assume that Michio was the cause of it. That concludes my inspection. 
<laughs> bug. I forgot. <laughs> Did you learn anything, Mr. Yashki? Yeah, a lot. Huh? Just what did you learn? There's no signs of life in this room. There's a layer of dust on the desk, and she neglected the frog she's been raising. Furthermore, the calendar on August, almost as if time has stopped here. But Michio came back here every day. She might have returned here, but I honestly doubt that she spent her time here as a human. Oh my god. The owner of this room loves frogs. The stuffed dolls, fish tank, and the poster. This place is full, is stuffed to the gills with frogs. That seems like something quite important. Um, uh, Mr. Yashki, why would that be important? How do I say it? It's hard to explain, but I just kind of feel it. Alright. Judging by the way she's staring at me, I don't think she's very convinced. I mean, for a person that came forward a lot during the game, saying how much she loves bugs over a lot of things, coming to her room seeing that she actually loves frogs, it's kind of weird. It's a contradiction. She didn't seem like she loved bugs themselves, if anything. She seemed like she loves to feed bugs to a frog. Residence preference change. The Micho I know loves bugs, but the owner of this room clearly loves frogs. Additionally, from what she wrote in her notebook, she only considers bugs to be food for a frog. That's a pretty drastic change in personality, don't you think? Well, true, but she's always been a fickle person. Her preferences change every once in a while. Last year she was really into video games, and before that she was obsessed with puzzles. Well, I that was really into books, and then I got really into video games, and now I'm into puzzles. I have like a shelf full of books, some of them are about puzzle solving, that is some, uh, some manga. I don't think it's there anymore, maybe my sister took it, but I have one of those um, one story RPG books in there. I still have some card games on my shelf as well. Um, I don't have board games anymore, but I, I did love playing Clue. And now I'm playing video games, because majority of puzzle games and story-based games that I enjoy are on the internet, so if anything, everything feels together. Why she, doesn't, why she couldn't love books and games about frogs? There is plenty of them. So honestly, it doesn't seem all that weird. Enzo Midorio. When did Michio start liking bugs? Um... It was around the end of August, when our summer break ended. Time in this room stopped in August, the same time as a dramatic change in preferences. That can be a coincidence in my book. Something must have happened to Michio around the time. She turned into a different person after that point. But is person even the right word here? Mr. Yashki, are you saying that? This room hasn't changed in a long time, and Mitchell suddenly changed her interests because she became the departed. I don't know. You must be joking. Michos did a part it. No, it can't be. Don't scream. I understand her feelings, I truly really do. If Micho really had interests changed since the end of August, that means when we first met at school that night, she was already. For the entire time of no Michio, she was the departed. The departed is a spirit. Spirits are already dead. Putting it that way, the Michio from that time. Mr. Yashki, if the Michio we knew recently was the departed, 
What about the real Micho? It's not hard to imagine. The Departed replaced the real Micho. Both of them wouldn't have been able to exist at the same time, so... I'm sure she was killed months ago. This can be real. This means I'm innocent! Yay! I... Oh. Our business here is done. We learned what we wanted to know. Or rather, we learned what we didn't want to know. Ever since leaving the dawn, Dorius had a blank look on her face. I can't blame her. She just lost her best friend a second time. I bet she's got no tears left to cry at this point. I mean, she might as well be the one to bash my head with a crowbar. You okay? Yes. A short, hollow response. She looks so pale and worried that she might just collapse. Let's head back to the infirmary. We need to share this information with the others. Bus? Oh, I want to go home. Have some proper coffee. Checking for two. I'm not cheating. <laughs> I'm just checking for two. What the hell? So sometimes when a string freeze like this, I learned. Um, I have a program here called. Um, it's probably widen, widely known by now. It's a program that helps me make the maintenance of my computer from time to time. And uh, when it checks for updates. It pops up a uh, a command prompt for some reason, but I, I checked to see what it was, and apparently it's not anything malicious. But it still freezes um, my computer for like a split second. It all it only happens once during the day, so it's not that bad. Infirmary. Master and Yasuke are waiting for me. I better report the findings with them. As soon as I save the game. I'm getting closer and closer to- I'm still opening! Getting closer and closer to save 6 to 9. Finally here. What'd you find? That an I learned for this- for blah 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 blah. I knew it. Micho Kinokawa is to the parted. And now the whole murder in the clock tower is also cleared up. That was just another one of the departed's tricks. Kinokawa manipulated you into thinking you, kill her, you killed her. Why should do that? Probably to destroy your mind with fear. She wanted to drive you insane. Maybe you being insane is one of the departed's marriage requirements. You're thinking like an insane. You're thinking like an insane. You're thinking like, comma, for some reason, an insane bride deserves an insane groom. Makes some sense. Killing a student who is in love with you. That certainly would be something that could drive a person mad. My mind would have been shattered had Dorio not shown up that day. Say do you. Is the whole avenge mutual for me promise I made with you still intact? Yes. This doesn't change the fact that the party still harm Michiko. Alright. I'll do my best then. Yashki, there's something I'd like to tell you. I deciphered the book you gave me. Appreciate it. This book details an ancient M Town ritual. Allow me to give her the gist. 
I jot down when I saw a says in my notebook. Summary of the old M Town book. In the past, severe famine devastated M Town. Residents of the town believed the fury of their deities, Mushigami and Kabigami, were the cause of the tragedy. Hence, shrines were built to worship their deities. Mushigami Shrine was located in downtown, while the Kabigami Shrine was in a fox forest. Mushigami Shrine and the Kabigami Shrine are merely house of worship for the two deities, one an insect deity, and the latter a mold deity. The main shrine to both Kab Kab Mushigami Mushikabi. The main shrine to both Mushikabi is located as well. Mushikabi Shrine is located deep in the fox forest off the road. Only relatives of the priests and the fox, the messenger, know how to get to the, to the shrine. The departed's wedding was held when a great famine occurred in M-Town. Held to wish for the end of the famine, or the famine, there is also a sacred wedding ceremony where the matched brides and grooms exchange vows before the two deities. This ritual was last held in the Meiji era, about a hundred years ago. It is said the selected brides and grooms completed the ceremony at the Mushikabe Shrine, when the great famine in M-Town finally came to an end. Because it is a holy ritual, the selection criteria for the brides and grooms was quite stringent. The grooms must be from the priest's family and have imp impeccable spiritual qualities. As for the brides, they must be pure maidens that come from a decent family. Furthermore, both of them have the exceptional in all aspects, including their intelligence, lineage, and personality. Hence, the chosen brides and grooms are said to be blessed and they are the envy of the town. Oh, bug. <laughs> Forgot about the bug. After she's done explaining the contents of the book, I'm left speechless. The area is named for bugs and molds, the departed wedding, the bride and the groom, and the selection. There are so many things in this book that overlap with the departed's actions and remarks. This book is definitely a way to finding out the departed's true identity. Agreed. It feels like we finally managed to get a real look at the Departed's history. But... Yasuoka hearts her words, pondering. If there is something in your mind, just say it out loud, Yasuoka. The mark on him? Yeah. Yeah? Hmm. Do you not find it strange? If the wedding ritual was blessed events like the book said, how could the departed have been born? She has a point. Based on my previous interaction with spirits, they birthed from grudges. This book, this book probably only covered a sanitized version of the truth. If there is another part shown in the darkest abhorrence, darkest ab 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 that, that's the part you need to uncover. I already inspected Mushigami Shrine in the corridor and Kabigami Shrine in the forest during the encounter with Mr. Kokuri. However, we didn't find any clues about the departed. The last one is the Mushikabe Shrine then. There might be something of note there. Mushikabe Shrine is located in the depths of Fox Forest. We don't have time to explore the whole forest. The only choice is to ask the fox how to get there. Yasuoka is referring to the fox, the messenger of the gods, mentioned in the book. There's a fox in the storage area on the size room, but it doesn't look like a messenger to me. I'm going to need to find another fox. Now that we have some direction, we can finally start the investigation. By the way, is Hiro not coming tonight? Yeah, I didn't contact her. I made a call. She's above a pay grade now. The departed has transformed and grown stronger. They are more dangerous than before. So I see imprudence to not get Hero and other regular people involved any further. That applies to you guys too. Don't get me wrong. I really appreciate your help. I just don't understand why they're willing to risk so much to help me. Like Yasuoka said, the departed has transformed and acknowledged me as their husband. This is on another level than helping me deal with the spirits in the notices. I have no idea what will happen next. 
And yet, they decided to jump into the hellhole alongside me. Where does that determination of theirs come from? This is my job. I believe it's my fate to save those who are terrorized by the wrath of spirits. I only live this long because my purpose in this world is of the living has not been completed yet. It's my job too. Because this old hag here, this old bag here asked me to, in a more literal sense, because I actually get paid to do it. It pays for the risk. Simple, straightforward answers. One is their morals, the other one is in just their back pocket. This is why I place my faith in them. A strong faith that can be described in words. The simple ways they lead their lives makes me feel like I can trust them with me. Mine. Mine. Thank you. Huh. Let's head out if you're done chatting. Yeah, let's go. Wait a minute, Mr. Yashki. Oh yeah, you're here. Can I... Can I come with you? Ask Master. You really have to ask me, you idiots. Of course you can come. Who in the right mind would bring a kid into a forest at night? You do make a good point. Stay put here, Doryu. But... They look awfully pale, Doryu. If you collapse, you only make things more difficult for Yashki. Let's both wait here, alright? Understood. Doryu nods reluctantly at Yasuoka's, uh, Yasuoka's assistance. Please be very careful, Mr. Yashki. Let's bring an end to this stupid game, Yashki. Hmm. Oh, hi. You're beginning posing. I can have a better look on you. Look at that. You are made of people. Okay. Like an accumulation of people. An amalgamation, even. Oh, you're clothed. I don't really see how that would do anything, but there you are. It's more like a doll or anything. Hmm. Short black hair. In any case, uh, to the forest. Middle stage, finally. Hello. Massive statue of the Guardian Fox stands in the... Okay, same thing. A Guardian Fox, sir. Guess this could be called the Messenger of the Gods. You might find a clue to the location of the Mushikabi here. We better respect, inspect it. Inspect it. Why this fox was originally put here to protect the Mushigami Shrine. While the fox is usually known as the messenger of the Inari Shrine in other parts of Japan, I guess it's different in this area. Can't seem to find anything unusual about this, even after I truly inspect it. And it's not like this fox is just going to start talking. What do we do now? How long are you gonna keep staring at the statue? We try checking the pedestal. Oh, up uh, right. I direct my flashlight towards the weather pedestal and inspect it. I smash the watch with a look of annoying disbelief. Looks like there was some letters written on the bottom part of the pedestal. This might lead us to the location of the shrine. Let's try to read it. God damn it. Uh, I try reading the letters on the bottom of the pedestal. A tooth, however. I can't read anything without the mold covering it. The hell? Just brush it off then. I tried, but it didn't come off at all. Must be stuck for good since I've been growing undisturbed for so long. Need some mold remover. 
Damn it, I'm encountering some really shitty things at this case. So where should we get some? Most doors are already closed for the night. Hmm. Let's look around the school. We might have some kind of thing for cleaning. Though I didn't find any mold removal in the broom closet when I was investigating Hanako's case. And searching the entire school would definitely take some time. Better ask someone who's familiar with the school first. Worst case scenario, head right back to the Kujo Mansion to grab something that'll do it. Okay. Back to the infirmary then. Hmm? What brought you back? We've encountered a bit of problem and I need your help. Tell her about the modes and na 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 na. Mold remover? I'm pretty familiar with the school, but I have no idea where they keep that. My apologies. At this rate, so I really need to go back to the Kujo Mansion and get a mold remover. Shafar's taking my nose in, but is there any bleach around that you know of? Bleach? Mold remover and cloning bleach have similar ingredients. You don't happen to know where the bleach is, told you. In the science lab. Student con- oh, what? I don't exactly remember where it is in the room, though. Okay. That of all places. According to Doryu, there should be a bottle of bleach here somewhere. Let's go looking for it. No reason to toddle. Trash. Mm -hmm. Nothing inside a trash can. Uh, curtains? Books? Desk? On the desk, I find a notepad with something written on it. With the next students... Will the next students meeting be postponed due to the recent events concerning the departed? What will happen to the clock tower project? Don't find any useful info. Clock, lights, a normal, shelves, and... Mm -hmm. There are several printouts in the whiteboards. One of them is about a clock tower. Um, I've seen this before, pretty sure. Yeah, I've seen this. Scarred stood in council room, but I haven't found anything to remove the molds. Maybe it's inside here. Open the door to find all sorts of miscellaneous stuff crammed inside. From a giant hole puncher and old notes to a certificate of commendation. Because anything that isn't used often gets shoved in here. Among them is a bottle of liquid bleach. Liquid bleach? Judging by the weight, there seems to be plenty left. As an odd way of saying it, liquid bleach. I may only know liquids. Why does Mashta has more spiritual power than me? I don't like it. Massive statue of the Guardian Fox stands here. Na -na 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 -na. An item. Bleach. Then I wait a bit before using my handkerchief to remove the molds. Doesn't come off completely, but it does a decent job enough that I actually make out the letters. You should be able to read what's written on the pedestal now. I... Just do it. The writing on the pedestal is apparently a poem that seems likely a bit, a bit like a nursery rhyme. The old writing style and weathering make reading it more difficult task than anticipated, but I managed to copy it into my notebook. Follow the fox vine, inviting us to the shrine, but the path is blocked by the serpent's rock. The beast behind the zodiac shall be the one to open the track. By imitating the serpent with his angry laments. What is the meaning of this rhyme? Um, just check the uh, the serpent pedestal on the forest. 
Fox Forest just beyond these gates. Mushikabi Shrine, where the Departed's wedding is held, is located somewhere in the forest. Alright, Yashiki. We don't know what kind of horrors are waiting for us in there. Hang on to this gun, but be very careful with it. Master hands me the paper bag again. It's heavy. That way I ever get to use this thing. You shouldn't. Let's go. I'll screw off. Relying on the faint lights from my flashlight, we tentatively step into the darkness of the forest. Mr. Kokori is no longer here, however. A more terrifying spirit might have replaced him. As fear and tension builds up inside my mind, bad beads of sweat start running down my cheek. Hold on. Listen carefully. Do you hear that? I hear a faint moan. Doesn't make sense. Why are we hearing that here? I have a bad feeling about this. Hurry up! Master and I rush over to the source of the sounds. After a while, I arrive at an open area full of trees. There. What? Hi! You're breaking apart? What is going on with you? I find Sakamoto in a horrible state. Sakamoto, what is happening to you? You all? You all? Did some insanely big bug chew up on you or something? What the heck happened to you? Are you... perhaps... Lord Mushigami? Come again? What are you saying? It's no use. She's clearly not in our right mind. For oh, fuck's sake, is there anything we can do for her? Sakamoto suddenly screams. At that moment, she bugs clinging to her launch and attack. Okay. Damn, what are we gonna do, Yashiki? We're in deep shit if we have to keep dealing with this. With this. Um. How am I supposed to know? Well, I think she might be too far gone to save. I hope we can at least do something for her. What I was happening to Sakamoto now is a paranormal phenomenon, not a mere hallucination. And we can return Sakamoto to her senses. Uh, what? What should I do to help Sakamoto in this situation? Uh, <laughs> paper bag? Uh, Sakamoto's report? Dried up frog. Read aloud? Um. Call towards insects. Attack the insects, fire one warning shot. Um. Frog. Grab the dried up frog and thrust it towards the bug slash the Sakamoto. Remember hearing frog drives away bugs or something. This might work. I bring the frogs closer to the bugs. When I do that, the bugs pull back as if they're retreating from the frog. Nice, looks like it looks like it's working. But even though the bugs try to avoid the frog, they still don't leave Sakamoto. I successfully intimidating the bugs, but she's still getting us to get us nowhere. Really? This accordion is going insane. Um, I mean, if it is Sakaboro, the, the issue, not the bugs. Just read it.
We carefully read the report out loud, speaking loudly and clear. Sakamura isn't responding much, though I can tell that she's listening. She starts to a glimmer of her consciousness left. He saw her voices may still reach her. Remember, Sakamoto. Yeah, I still report your roles. Huh? Is that my... But why is it... Looks like Sakamoto returned her senses a little bit. It's the right choice. Wait, is that it? I... Why am I... Sakamoto murmured, stupefied. Bugs are sticking out of a large holes in her head and chest. If this were a normal situation, those wounds would have killed her a long, long ago. However, she's talking. It's probably another instance of the departed's curse. Stayashiki. Her remaining left eye fixes his gaze on me. Guess she's recognized me. She's well beyond saving at this point, though maybe I can still ask some questions. Uh, <laughs> remains silent. Um, did a party through identity? She may know. Shrine's location, I have an idea on that. Remain silent. Um, damn it, who the departed really is, Sakamoto? The departed? I don't know anything. There's no point in asking her this. Tell me where the main shrine is. You went there, didn't you? The main shrine... main shrine is beyond the serpent rock. Yeah, we know. There, make the bloody red... Hmm? pure blue. I'm just speechless. <laughs> I'm just playing... Oh, she fell. Like a puppet whose strings have been cut, Sakamoto collapses on the spot. Stops moving, and... Instantly, insects swarm her body. Oh, great. They begin to devour her before my very eyes. Stop it! I try to kick the insects off her. This is futile. There's no way these bugs can be stopped. Please stop. Stop this. I can't bear to watch someone in you get consumed by insects, bit by bit. In the end, I have to avert my eyes. Once the insects finish in her body, they scatter into the dark forest. It's not a trace of Sakamoto's remains, bones or clothes left. Why? Sakamoto? Didn't that teacher try to railroad you into the school? Out of the school? The Rapata doesn't want you to leave. I probably led her to being cursed. Sakamoto was cursed by the departed. That probably explains why she's gone mad in the middle of writing her report, hearing a voice in her head still where Izumi had. But it's all because of her hostility towards me. Was because she had she got mixed up with me. If, was, if I wasn't here, the Sakamoto would. Let's pop the brakes on that right now. Another priest, so I'm not here to listen to a beautiful wailing and offer your repentance. God damn. I thought he would console me or something. Oh, there we go. But maybe that one was actually saved. Otherwise, she wouldn't have regained her sanity on the brink of death. And she wouldn't have been able to leave that hint for you, either. I recall Sakamoto's last words. The main shrine is beyond the serpent rock. Bear make it the bloody red, pure blue. Mm. The latter half is a mystery to me, but I've got an idea what she was referring to in the first half. Serpent rock is also really on the fox pedestal. Is that rock the key to get to the main shrine? And we go to the zodiac stones again. Mushroom. M mushroom. Yes. Oh. Hmm. 
Know your resentment. Oh wow. What's that voice just now? The bridal procession. You seen visions again? Yeah. Wow, it's a pretty handy way to get get information. Seeing as our investigation so far is going nowhere fast. So what did you see? Related details about the scene I saw and the voice told what the voice told me. I see. The description in the old book is right. That sounds like the departed's wedding. So it's saying saw the past. The bridal procession went through the forest. Guess I must have been heading to Mushikabi Shrine. What the voice belong to though? No idea, but Know your resentment. This isn't the type of hiding you say of thing you say during a happy occasion. I knew it. There's something darker behind it. We followed the bridal procession and head to the Mushikabi Shrine. Which is located somewhere deep in the forest. We will finally be able to find out the truth about the departed's wedding. It's a snake. Okay. Behind the stone statue, there seems to be as animal tracks leading further into the woods, diverging from the path. We follow the animal tracks surrounded by the overgrown flora. Once again, one was waiting for me in the deep dark forest. That? There's an open air in front of us. Something's there. A native voice has been ringing in my ears for quite some time. The further we walk down the path, the louder the chant like sound becomes. Does the cause of the spiritual phenomena lie ahead? Is that a Norikabe? Oh, it's a rock. Hello? A gigantic rock is sitting in front of us. A thick sacred rope is wrapped around the rock. It's not resembling a snake head. A little bit. Uh, even There is even a little tongue on it. Okay, this might be the separate rock Sakamoto was talking about. But what do we do now? Rock and serpent. Serpent rock. Now that I think about it, serpent rock was also part of the rhyme written on the Guardian's Fox platform. Mm -hmm. The beast behind the zodiac shall be the one to open the track by imitating the serpent with his angry lament. Follow the fox shrine. Okay, okay, okay. It's probably a clue how to get there. So if you go down this path, the beast behind the zodiac shall be the one to open the track by imitating the serpent with his angry lament. Open the path. That means we have to do something here. The beast behind the zodiac. Until we can solve this riddle, I have no idea how to proceed. So what animal is the beast? How much did the answer come up with? Nah, I don't think so. But we'll make that the beast behind the zodiac. Hmm. What do you think it is then? Hold on, I'm thinking. Master takes out his cigarette and lights it. He then starts pacing back and forth. This must be what he does when he's thinking hard about something. Take your time. He makes me wait until he finishes smoking an entire cigarette. This is just my guess. But I think the beast is the cat. Oh shit. Oh yeah. The cat is the 13th zodiac. 
Let's try. It just came back with Okami to my head. Okami and kind of like an old legend, more or less, now that I think about it. It's an old folk legend about um, the animals of the Zodiac. I don't really remember how it started, but it's all about a race. Where... Um, the winner of the race kind of gets something. But in the end it was decided how... Like the order of the animals that finished the race was the order of the sign of the, of the Zodiac. I just remembered a few parts of it. One is that the mice that was so slow was actually losing the race. So the horse took pity on the mice. And allowed, it was the horse or the ox, someone, allowed the, the mice to ride the, on their backs. And then something, something happens, the mice helps this animal. And then on the, on the end of the race, the animal is so grateful that allows the mice to finish first. Which is why the mice, or the mouse, whoever you call it, is the first one on the zodiac. While the cat was so lazy and so um, confident on his skills of finishing the race first than any other animal, he didn't compete. That's why even though the cat is technically part of the Zodiac, he's not part of the 12 animals. Hmm. And then there is Okami where, um, you know, the cat is actually parts of the powers that you get, even though he's not an animal. But then you kind of go search for it and you find that folk tale and find a, lot, a few other things. Huh. Makes sense. Why a cat? Oh, come on. Remember the 12 zodiac animals? Rats, ox, oh, it's an ox, tiger, rabbits, and so on. According to the myth, when they were deciding on the zodiac animals, the cat was late to the meeting, so it didn't get chosen. You must have heard the story before. I can't say that I have. Well, what about the lament part? Maybe the path will open up if we imitate a cat's meow or something? Why a meow? How if I know? Human common sense doesn't apply to spirit logic. Come on, Yashki, give it a try. Meow like a kitten, Yashki. Do it for me. <laughs> Wasn't expecting a voice clip. That doesn't sound like it accomplished anything at all. I see, so simply imitating a cat isn't enough. The bathroom opened without a cat's meow that sounds like it's imitating an angry snake. I don't get it. What we need is the sound of an angry cat that is trying to imitate a menacing snake. That's not helping me. I can't even imagine what that song will- is a hiss. See my confusion, Master shrug his shoulder dejectedly. Like this. <laughs> what the hell, Master? Yashki! <laughs> oh god. This place is. Are we back where we started? Not really. The atmosphere here is different though. Spider lilies are blooming period periodically, mushrooms growing faintly. Everything looks surreal. As far as I recall, as I can tell, I'm alive. But I feel like I'm lost in the afterlife. Have we perhaps made it to the hidden path to the Mushikabi shrine? What is pacing out on me for? Save other brain work for later. It won't last longer this rate. Yeah. Set is filled with the curse's power. Where's the source of this power? We need to get rid of it immediately. Find the tooth. Oh, find the tooth. Numerous mushrooms are growing on the tree. I don't think the root of the curse is here, but look somewhere else. Okay. I can't run while I'm doing this, by the way. 
There's a fox holding a blue flower. A blue spider lily. Mouse was supposed to wake up the cat, but instead the mouse let the cat- Oh! Is that how it goes? I don't remember. It's been so long since I... I heard the story. I just remember some pieces of it. I thought it was a race or something. Garden fox with the flowers in his mouth. Looks like the ones in the schoolyard. Yeah, there are some secrets lying here. Let's take a closer look. He's holding a flower. Garden fox has a blue spider lily in his mouth. Yeah, yeah, I know. Can you can you get it? No. Item. Bleach. A frog on a frog on the flower. No. Bleach on the flower. Can you? No. A, a gun and flower. No. I guess I can't do it any anything right now. First two slung on the floor. I have to destroy it with the damn thing. Raising my food, I step on the tooth. Cursed tooth shatters into pieces. Strange. The curse doesn't abate. Fuck, how's that possible? It's got him in the tooth for the step down. What's the cause of this curse? I've gotta find the real cause then. I see traces of animal tracks near the bushes behind the garden fox. There might be something ahead. Uh, unless the curse is here somewhere still. No? Okay. I hear the piercing high pitched cry of a beast somewhere. It's a fox cry. Chills run up my spine. An ominous sense of terror is racing through my veins. It's uncomfortable feeling, only grows stronger as I explode further down the path. I can still go. A blue lily. A, a red lily. Red. Bad on fox with flowers in his mouth. A red spider lily. Wait. This isn't a red spider lily. It's a blue spider lily that's been dying red using blood. Um. Blood stained spider lily. No, I don't. Uh, or should I use this? To use bleach on the spider lady. Frog. A gun. Uh, notes. Old book. I still have it for some reason. Uh, this. No. Okay. Seven. It's dangerous to continue while I'm going. <laughs> Dead. Another high pitched beast cry echoes through the air. At the same time, my body refuses to move and my heart begins to thump violently. It's just because of the curse. My vision is turning red. I'll be killed if I don't run. And then I didn't. Hello. Well, I'm dead. For the infirmary, you're kidding me. You want to resume from when you left in front? Not really, no. I want to resume from before I died. Specs. It's not this one. Specs. It is this one. Fox path. Severe chill and overwhelming pressure instantly vanishes. Is that because the curse is no longer active? What is this place anyway? A mysterious area filled with blue flowers and a rustic looking tomb. Oh, there's a tomb. 
No, that's a well. Has to have some important meaning. Never inspect and better inspect it truly. Well. An old well surrounded by blue spider lilies. Why is it here? I have a bad feeling about this. Careful when inspecting Yashki. I need to mash them, make up my mind and approach the well. Then intimidated being inside. There, I find. Grab scare! Oh. A bunch of stones and gravel. God dang it. Oh, thank goodness, my hunch was wrong. Ah, what a disappointment. What are you expecting, a little girl? Some weird VHS tape? Someone else's family business? Blue spider lilies are grown in clumps. Spider lilies are usually red, though there are white and yellow varieties. However, blue spider lilies doesn't exist naturally. This might be mystical flowers that only bloom in the mysterious hidden path. Hmm. I pluck a blue spider lily and put it in my bag. Hmm. Two headstones with some words carved in them. The actually on one grave was weathered so much that it's basically unreadable, but at least it still has a few letters here and there. The order has, the order has scarcely any trace left that is ever said anything to begin with. A new voice is ringing in my ears again. Know your resentment. Could this voice belong to one of the spirits resting here? Whose graves are they though? If only we could find out who the owners of these tombs are. Let's investigate. Um, maybe I can deduce what's screaming on the stone if I run my fingers over it and feel for the indentations. Focusing my attention on the tip of my finger, I attempt to slowly trace the letters. I see. On the left is Grr. The right one is probably N, or maybe an M. I'm pretty sure it's a word. What could it be? Groom. It must be the groom. Give an answer in my mind. Ah! I... Sorry. What? Did the spirits in the tomb just respond to my answer? If the owner had described the spirits of a headless man in a wedding suit... Is the one buried over... Is the one buried here over the bridegrooms who died a natural death? It's a tooth. How the last souls in this chapter will be- oh! New information will be added to the character file at a specified time after the end of the chapter- oh, that's different. Well, I got a blue spider lily, which I know where to put it. Nope, nope, nope! Fox path. Blue spider lily, the fox noise. Chills run down my body. What in the world is happening on this forest? I got a fox with the flowers in his mouth, just like one of the schoolyards. Item. There we go. I replaced the bloodstained spider lily in the fox mouth with a blue spider lily. And I'm just gonna keep it. The malicious spiritual phenomena in this place has subsided. Nice. I can run now. Oh wait. The path is shorter? What?
Well then, at the end of the hidden path, I find the grounds of a shrine surrounded by trees. Unlike the shrine on the main path, which has completely gone, rambling remnants of the shrine remain. Is this the main shrine? The Moshikabe shrine? I feel the blood drain from my face when I hear the ad admonishing tone, the same voice I heard at the forest entrance and at the tomb. We will then uncover the honor of that voice who investigate this place. I mean... I hope so. Uh, forest. Darkness rounds the back of the bushes. Only the occasional rustling of the leaves can be heard. That's about it. The crumbling shrine remains at the back of the grounds. The darkness of the woods makes it apparent that the shrine is built a long time. <laughs> Excuse me. A long time ago. Came out of nowhere. Did I miss? I did. I missed the mute button. This place really is Moshikabe shrine. The departed's wedding took place here, right? Yeah. Here, where Mushikabe and Kabigami were Mushikami and Kabigami were enshrined. The chosen bride and groom had a sacred wedding as they wished for the famine in Nemtown winds. Probably guessed the Yashki, but does it seem like that the departed is actually the spirit of the brides? They're obsessed with marriage. It must be tied to the wedding ritual. My guess is, something happened during the ritual that is the source of the grudge. Makes a lot of sense. That being said, we need to learn what happened in this place. We'll never be able to exterminate the departed unless we learn the truth of what happened in the past and the origin of our resentment. Let's hope there are some clues left. Hope? Don't make me laugh. Here's some words of wisdom for you. Truth is something you should reel in with brute force. When I take a closer look in the ruined shrine, I notice there's something buried here. Is a wooden box? Going inside the collective is a risky proposition. What should I do? Um, figure out a more cautious approach. Like, hmm. no. Or is this the game give me an opportunity to go back and s Game. 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 Listen to me. Going back and save... Means going back to the library, saving. Going back to the forest, going back to the serpent path, going back to the fox path, going back here. If it was just a matter of screens, I wouldn't understand. But I have to walk on them. So, screw you. If it was the first game, maybe I would do that. Just pick it up. Master, I'm going to I'm going to get that wooden box. Seriously? I'll go get it. It's your reflexes will be trapped in there if the roof collapses. Master steps into the shrine via a gap in the falling roof. Cautiously avoiding the decaying pillars on the floor. You proceed slowly. Are you alright, Master? We making a fuss of a nothing, I just hear my hands. How am I making a fuss? Okay, still when you want it, right? Master returns with a Paulonia boxing hand. He then puts his down on the ground. A bug. <laughs> You're forgetting about the bug. It's the only thing that stood out for me. Everything else in there is just broken pots and altars. Hurry up and open it, Yashki. Oh. 
Inside the box are a vermilion ink palette and a bundle of paper. Palette. While the ink might be old, the container was sealed so it should still be useful. The paper is yellow, yellowing, so it must have been down there for quite some time. There are some red stains in here as well. This looks more like blood than ink though. There's something written on the paper. Read it. I can read it quickly. It's written in old script, and I can't make it out. Better have Yasuoka do it. The hell? Just gonna keep me in suspense. How about the stuff on the first three pages? And those names? How am I supposed to know? I don't read weird ass Japanese Sanskrit. Toolbox. Mushigami Groom Tsuguo Kitajima Head. Kabigami Groom Jiro Uchikoshi Head. Tsuguo, not Tsugumo. Part mentioning head is stained with blood, making it difficult to decipher. Hexstar head part. No idea. We read the second and third sheets. Marriage. Kabigami Brides Mikiko Mai 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 Mayumura. Mushigami Bride Michio Mayumura. The ceremony be held on Muki and six others. There are thumbprints next to the three names. That's why the Vermilion Ink must have been used for. The priest's last name is Izumi. Is that a coincidence? Mikiko Mayumura and Michio Mayumura. I did the brides for the departed wedding. This ceremony is the genesis of the departed's resentment. One of them might have died a horrible death and became the departed. Which one of them then? With us, with us, oh. And they're gonna appear. Uh, 11, go away, I'm dying here. A vision is projected into my mind. Ha! Huh. Wow, that's not good. Several men are holding down two women in the dimly lit room. Those men are putting horrific insects and molds on the bodies of the two that those are mushrooms. And in the back, there's a small offering stand with the heads of the two men placed on it. Are they gluing the, the bugs on the body? And the mold, mushroom, whatever. Maybe. <laughs> The woman let out pain groans. We'll make her up, make up out now. The man continued to apply the disgusting makeup in silence. The woman on the left is covered in molds, while the one on the right is riddled with bugs. The porcelain skin has been made filthy. The woman scream and contort. However, the men prevent them from escaping. Do not struggle. Do not scream. Your stamina is essential for the ceremony. 
our days, weeks from now, we shall paint you with the color of bugs and molds, so you shall be suitable brides for the deities. The voice is mixed with pain and anger. And yet her words don't register with the man as they all continue to smell bugs and molds on them with inspectionless faces. Spend your days covered in bugs and molds, eating bugs and molds. Your organs shall be infused with molds, and the cavities in your body shall be filled with insects. It will be as if you have departed from this world. Lord Moshigami and Kabigami shall be delighted to see how beautiful their brides are. <laughs> With a life where roughen, a porcelain skin turns black as molds, or hair becomes the color of a silkworm's cocoon. Suffering is the The suffering is the pledge of a happy couple. This isn't a pledge I hope for. I shall never forget this. Everyone in this village. Even if I die and become to the parties. Ah. As my vision starts to blur, I regain my senses. However, my breathing strikes and my body is trembling uncomfortably. I felt this intense loading flowing from, the, from me when the vision came in. It's all their fault. <laughs> Goddamn bug! <laughs> hey, why are you shaking so much? What happened? Master, I... I think I know the origin of the Departed's resentment. I just say... Oh, there they are. The sussy bug! The Departed? Since when did you get here? Like an insect, the Departed wriggles their way closer. It's like the time when I kill Michio. But why are they here? Does this place really hold meaning for them? My dear husband. Despite the transformation, the nickname for me remains the same. As well as their obsession towards me. The departed. Forcing myself to suppress my fear or propel words out of my mouth. There's something I want to ask them. You... Were you killed here? So you saw. You saw the ugly part of me. Were you Mayumura in your past life? Forget the ugly me. I shall be more beautiful soon. For you, dear husband. You still regret what happened. I can help you dispel it. Cut that shit out, Yashki. Don't talk with the dead or you're dragged to the world. Thanks, Master. For fuck's sake, are you trying to get yourself killed? Get your shit together and prepare yourself, got it? Okay.
What? I am the one who should be standing next to my husband. You are a hindrance. Ah! Master clutch is chest here, that's a painful groan. Are they going after Master? Master! Fuck, they're really messing with me. The departed harbors hostile feelings towards Master. Master will be in danger if we confront the departed now. Then again, an opponent? That would suck. Yeah. Then again, an opponent for the spiders to depart it. There's no way you'll be able to run away from them easily. If I'm going to run away, I need to create an opening. Act 1. How do I take advantage of the departed spheres in order to create an opening? Um, now with Master. Vermilion ink. Smell on my lips. Smell on my cheek. Fire one in shot. Shoot the departed. Make an offering. Uh, papa. Lips. Yes. Try opening the lips so I can get the vermilion ink. Does it fall on the floor on 4%? No. Opening the lips, apply some of the ink on my lips as if I'm going doing my own makeup. Ever since prehistoric times, makeup has always held significance in relation to the gods and the dead. So it might also have significance to the departed. However, the departed shows no interest in my attempt at makeup and becomes hostile to Mashta. So I don't know. Bugs! Mashta is a big trouble here. I need to come up with a different plan. Um, maybe I can use that fast to create an opening and escape by making them feel uneasy. How do I do that? Oh! Uh, bug. Bug. A uh, frog. Yeah, present the frog before the departed. Fear I got at this Mushikabi shrine. Will you please accept this offering? Really? Well, we are, have the same life points now. Yashiki. Uh. Whatever, yes. just just shoot the gun. There's no guarantee the gun will have any effects into the party. Oh, it works. Point the gun to the party's huge body and squeeze the trigger. The bullet seems to hit the party's body. Nice one. They might like me a lot, but they, maybe the love is strong enough to survive an attack. The departed sounds sad, and the breathing becomes unsteady. That seems to have made him feel a bit uneasy. It's the right choice. Did you do something bad in your past life or what? She had his clearly head over heels in love with you. Guess they are. What is this bastard trying to be sexy for? I'm just, it's the same thing I've been asking for a few days. The party furiously shrieks after hearing Master's insult. Oh. Then he slowly approaches. us. The party can't maintain their composure. I cause the thing hidden behind a huge body, something resembling a face, become ex exposed. Damn. Well, we managed to get them riled up, but now they're closing in. True, except the target is apparently me. When the time comes, they lure them to me. Use that chance to escape. That's madness. If you do that, you will... Mm. 
We need to create an opening to escape. What should I do to get away from the Departis? The bodies, no, those are thorns. Should be aim push to the face. Uh, the face. As I'm about to hand the paper back to Master, he pulls out his own gun. He then aims to the Departis' face. Oh yeah, he he has one, doesn't he? Aim the gun to the pilot's face, smash the swift to pull the trigger. It seems like Master aim is true when the bullet hits the face. How about that, you piece of shit? But then they shriek in anger and become hostile to us, smashed again. This one of the insects bursts out of the pilot's body and attack Master. I have one more chance. Master is going to be deep trouble with this skips up and just come up with a new idea. Two of the part are even more distraught. And I think that means I need to do something that will shock them deeply. Me? Um Aim the gun to the pilot's face, squeeze off a shot, he hits. The bullet seems to hit the pilot in what appears to be their face. Nice shot. Can you imagine anything that would set someone off more than being hit in the face, especially if by their beloved? The pilot is ap apoplectic. They scream in rage. I wanted to make them really distraught, but I think I pissed them off instead. However, oh, what is happening? Unable to control their emotions, the repadalas are a screen that pierces the sky. They stagger backwards, trying to hide their face. It's not job sure has some crazy mood swings, huh? But I think we managed to provoke them. Alright, so chest to run away, time to go. True, but we should split up to make sure that at least one of us gets out of here. But no time to complain, just do it. I cut through the forest to follow the path. Understood? If I can even reply, Master has already run to the woods, avoiding the departed. Upon seeing that, excuse me, the departed shrieks in rage. Chasing after Master, they disappear into the woods. The departed Master vanished. A sense of hopelessness and loss swell up inside me anew. Again, I was powerless to do anything. Mashta. Half ten health. Oh. The sound and his presence. The female doll is standing as she always does. I'm right back here, near the clock tower. Run away. It's all over. The school, you, everyone. Attacked by Mushkabi, beaten by them, eaten. Like us. What do you mean by like us? You remember that day we were eaten by Mushikabi. We became one. Mushikabi. Scary. Hmm. 
Wait, what did she say just now? They were beaten by Mushikabi. Don't tell me this doll is. What is it really? None of the intense hatred I felt earlier is coming from this doll. Instead, I sense confusion and fear. I'm begging you, please tell me. Who are you? I. We. The spell sounds. What? The female doll screams and disappears. I recall what she just said. It's all over. The school, you, everyone. You'll be attacked by Mushikabe, beaten by Dan and Eden. Sounds really ominous, but what does it mean? I have a bad feeling about this. Better head back to the inform <coughs> infirmary immediately. <coughs> Excuse me. My oh no, I'm going down hard. Wow. Oh, it's right here too. What? What in the world? Even oh, even the lights in the special building have done red. See the same in the infirmary. Yep. Skeleton. Um. As I fear, the infirmary is also bathed in red light, and the two people who are left here are nowhere to be found. Doryu! Yasuoka! There's no response. Has the departed come here again? At the time, the departed left to know the target city student council on the desk, and given previous events. I knew it. It's another notice for them. This is to the departed send at the test of the candidate for a husband. Except they really consider me their real husband. How else would they want to test me now? Dear husband, the day to exchange vows has arrived. I shall be waiting for you under the oath bell. Please come after you count one, two, three, four, five. After that, in the red red reading hall, please call the name of your bride who is hiding in school. Your beloved the departed. The words to unfold of reading upside down. Notice for groom. Exchange vows, oath bell, ceremony hall. Does this phrase refer to a wedding ceremony? Wait, that voice. Yasuoka? Rush over and find Yasuoka lying under the bed. She's unconscious, but she doesn't appear to have sustained any injuries. Hang in there, Yasuoka. Ah. Yashiki. Are you alright? Yes, I'm more or less. Bug. What in the world happened to you? I don't know. I was talking with Doryu. And then suddenly my head started spinning and I just lost consciousness. What is Doryu? My apologies, I don't know. Perhaps she was being taken by the departives, like I in a show. Doryu. I have to hurry and look for her. But I'll only be killed if I chase after the departed now. I'll die upon to the staff without saving anyone. This will be a battle against the departed, and there is a key to clear the grudge. I only stand a chance against him if I can find a key. I need to calm down. I should show Yasuoka the paper bundles I retrieved from the forest, and I, that I couldn't read. There might be clues in them. Final stage. You look like you have many things that you want to talk about. 
I know you're anxious and impatient right now, but can you please just tell me what happened? Why is Mashta, by the way? Why are you alone? About that. Uh huh. Oh, I see. Because of me, Mashta is. Do not blame yourself. Mashta was simply living the life according to his own rules. He shouldn't have any regrets. What rules? To live the life of an officer. Even after he quit, he couldn't run away from his destiny. Mashta is a tenacious man who would do anything to solve a case. Despite that, he never allowed himself to forget his past like a cop. Past life as a cop. Those were his rules. Then that means. I get it. Mashta. I give you my all and focus on solving this case. That's what you want, right? Yasuoka, where did the lights hit on red? I noticed as I started to lose consciousness. The departed curse seems to have enveloped the entire school. It's the worst. We don't know what will happen. But why now? If the cause is the same as last time, the house to depart has transformed again. That means... Did they consume something again? Possibly. What did they consume then? Say, Yasuka. Can you decipher the papers for me? I believe this is about the departed's wedding. It is an old script. And I'm sure this has something to do with the departed's grudge. Sure. There's not much here, so it shouldn't take long. Wait a spell. Uh, in the meantime, organize all the information I got in the forest. I might find out the truth about the departed. I did skip one piece of text. Hold on. In the meantime, the departed's wedding, a sacred wedding ceremony that was held in an attempt to end the famine. Now, the center. The brides and grooms were carefully selected based on their intelligence, lineage, personality, and spiritual strengths. Which is why the chosen ones were thought to be blessed and envied by many. The truth is, those chosen brides and grooms actually believed they had a blissful marriage. <coughs> The two chosen brides were Mayu Mayumuras, they are obviously sisters. And one beautiful night, the gorgeous bridal processing advanced deep into the forest. They are headed towards Mushikabe Shrine. However, the marriage ceremony held at that place was far from the happy occasion they wished for. Instead of marrying the grooms, the brides were paired with their deities Mushigami and Kabigami. Before they beheaded grooms, they were prepared for the wedding of the deities. And that preparation included being given a makeover with bugs and molds. Over time, the skins were consumed by insects and molds. To keep themselves alive, they consumed both the insects and the molds. And that's how the women who assembled corpses were made worthy of becoming brides of their deities. For a long, long time, they had to suffer with bugs and mold, slowly eating away at their bodies. A brutal betrayal for brides who were deceived into thinking they were destined for happy marriage. Such an incident is cruel enough to have borne myriad grudges. <laughs> Fucking bug. I'm done reading. As you presume, this was indeed about the departed sweating. I shall give you a summary. Uh huh. Two box. Mushigami Grun Tsugo Kitajima. Kabigami Grun Shiro Yushikoshi. Marriage. Kabigami Bride Mikiko Mayumura. Ceremony be held on year. Na, 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 na. I already know this info. Okay. Yasuoka summary of the paper bundle. 
There was a note about the religious oaths and the departed wedding for the grooms, brides and priestess. Looks like residents of the town forgot the ceremony procedure given that it had been 100 years since it was last held. The chief priest of Moshikabe Shrine re secretly wrote this memo for them. During the wedding ceremony in M Town, the two grooms shall present their brides with red threads and smear lipstick on their teeth. The ceremony is unique to M Town, where silk worms and soft flowers flourish. Previous brides have been overjoyed to, re to be proposed to do in such a traditional way. However, the departed's wedding is different. Instead of the grooms, Mushigami and Kabigami, men from the town shall present the brides with insects instead of red threads and smear moles upon them instead of lip lipstick. This betrothal ceremony shall last for several days. During this time, the bride shall eat bugs and moles to survive. Their bodies shall continue to be consumed by insects and molds until they have turned into the departed, brides worthy of wedding the deities. Ahsoka's summary of the papers confirms what I saw in my vision, although I've only learned maybe half of the truth of the situation. That much is enough to make my skin crawl, my stomach wreck, wretch. I've said everything I wanted to say to Yasoka. And with that, I have all the keys that I can possibly prepare. I don't know if this will be enough to battle against the departed's enormous resentment. But still. Why is this song? Came out of nowhere. Are you going, Yashiki? Yeah, the departed is calling me. I have to bring an end to this night. As much as I want to come along with you, I'm afraid I'm only getting away. My feet have been hurting after I fainted. I'm unable to run in my condition. It's fine. You can stay here. If I fail to come back, please take care of the rest for me. Understood. Do you know where the departed is? Streaming the notice. The clock tower. Right below the old bell. I see. Hear me out, Yashiki. Master risked his life to you. As did I, Sho, Diamond, and Hiro. Everyone wanted to help you out. That is what they believed. Faith is a weapon to battle against fear. And that's how they were able to challenge those spirits. You're right. Thanks to them that I'm here at this critical moment. So Yashiki, you risk your life to pursue the spirits, but what drives you to it? My motivation. Spare me talk of a sense of responsibility or obligation. Tell me what you hope to accomplish by hunting spirits. What made me start chasing spirits? Initially, it was because I didn't want to die. Four months ago, I pursued spirits to escape death. I managed to save the souls of those spirits and I survived. That should have been the end of my dealings with spirits. Except, it wasn't. I continued, pers I continued pursuing them, enduring the fear and putting my life on the line. Why did I do that? I can only think of one answer. I just can't ignore those who are stabbed into darkness. Not only those who are targeted by spirits, but the spirits who are bound by their regrets, who also want to be saved. I simply want to do what I can to help them. So I want to save everyone. I'm not a saint. I know I can't save everyone. But I want to reach out my hand as far as I can to, to as many as I can. Hmm. I don't care if that makes me sound like a hypocrite with a martyr complex. Ha, huh. you sound like a doctor. Maybe because I am the spirit doctor. In that case, you shouldn't hang on to that hypocrisy. So that everyone, both the living and the dead, can be saved and rest peacefully. Yeah.
the clock tower. The apartment must be waiting inside to exchange vows with the groom, me. Once I step inside here, this case has come to some kind of conclusion. Though there is one matter left that I need to resolve before I enter this place. And that is the true identity of the departed, who has been hiding here in Konohara Academy. In the red, Reading Hall. Please call the name of your bride who is hiding in the school. Reading the notice, it seems like they want an answer. I won't have a time to think about this once I'm inside, so now is the only time I have to think it over. There will be crucial choices after this. Once you make your choice, you won't be able to return to the infirmary until the story progresses. You may want to collect more lost souls and sacred objects and save your progress first. Shall we solve the departed's mystery? First of all, I have some speculation about their identity. About a hundred years ago, there were brides who were brutally murdered during a wedding ceremony in M-Town. Harboring grudges against all the residents while still longing for marriage, they were devoured by insects and molds. Their enormous grudges turned them into the departed, that much you know. Now the real question is, how did the departed hide in the school? <coughs> hmm. Toshihiko Izumi said the departed was pretending to be a human. If he was telling the truth, I have a bad feeling to transform into someone I know. You would want to observe the groom, me, from nearby. People of Konohara Academy who interacted with me, many of them were victims in the spirit cases. Naomi Horikoshi, Shinji Kapta, Hitsu Sakamoto, they're no longer here. I couldn't protect them. The ones who are still alive are the headmaster Seizo Konoe, Hime Kodoryu, Haruaki Abe, Saki Maruhashi, and Mishiko Kinokawa, whose status is unknown. Michiho died at the clock tower last night. But if she was the departed, her death will not, be, will not prove her innocence. There's also the matter of the things we noticed at her dorm room. There's clearly something odd about that room. It's safe to say Michiho Kinokawa is a prime suspect. Let's start deducing now. Assume that the departed is among the ones that are still alive. You can exclude Mr. Conway or Nabe. The departed is said to be a bride, and the ones who hold the grudge are female, so it stands to reason that they transform into a girl. It still serves conjecture, obviously. But without solid evidence, I'm going to have to make some assumption to narrow down the suspects to the most likely candidates. <coughs> what about Maruhashi? I didn't meet her until Mr. Kokuri's case. Before that, the departed attack both I and Sho after learning about my friendship with them. Marohashi doesn't know they're, that they're my friends, so the chances of them being the departed are slim. Doryo is rather suspicious. Together with Michio, she's been helping me from the very beginning. Additionally, she knows all about the case and is quite interested in me. We can assume Himiko Doryu is a suspect. It's just a possibility, but... If Michu or Doryu are the departed, they smile when they call my name and when they told me they believed in me. It all came from the dead. The reality would be a bitter pill to swallow. Pill. Pill. Get a pill. You don't swallow a pill. However, there's still another possibility. And that's the fact that Izumi might not have been telling the truth. Izumi was going insane at the time. He might have not intended to lie, but that's not to say he didn't lie either. If you consider the possibility, the female doll would seem suspicious. We were eaten by Mukisha Mushikabi. Mukishabi. The last words matched the ritual scene I saw in my mind. 
Especially because the word we will refer to the two brides. Good, the two brides. Two souls with the same resentment turn into a single spirit. And that spirit is the departed. The possibility is there. You can assume the female doll is also a suspect. An arcade detective novel, a police drama. Not just going to turn up definitive evidence in a spirit case like this. Despite that, I still have to make a choice. Among the three likely candidates, which is the departed? I can't afford to make a mistake. Michio Kinokawa is. Oh. Um. What did I press? Oh. I mean, uh, she's the departed. <clears throat> is she? Everything points out that she is. If the things change from the day that she opened the gates. I got dang it. What is my logic here? There is two brides. Two brides who become one spirit. The assumption so far is that the part of us only one person, but up to this point, up to this point, on this chapter, it has proven that the possibility is actually different. The departed is one entity made of two spirits. So nothing says that the departed can be the departed, like two different spirits acting as one. So yeah, Micho is the departed. Himeko Doryu is the departed. The female Dao is. A seal. She's not a departed. What if I give the wrong answer though? Mitch Hodoryu and the female doll are the departed. Is this my final answer? Yes. <laughs> I wanna see what happens. I know my answer. Time to go to the clock tower, everything will be clear there. Whether I like it or not. I probably shouldn't do this though. Mm. The door to the clock tower is open. The party is waiting for me up ahead. I can't even imagine what will happen next. I inhale the clear night air and breathe it out. Then I push the door open. Oh, I'm moving. Oh, hands. What in the world? There are red handprints all over the wall. There's only one. The red mold, not blood. The same type of mold was on the notices. The tower wasn't like this before. The clock tower has changed. It is also the work of the departed. Uh, there is this dreadful sensation filling the air. The power of the curse is overwhelming. How to put an end to it quickly? One arm shaped clump of red mold is emerging from the wall. Oh, I see. One. Micho and him had gotten different chances when they entered the clock tower, so it makes sense that it would replace the old bride while the old dog rolls around. Yeah. Maybe? Replace the old bride. I mean... 
I still don't fully understand where that all comes from, but she feels like a seal of some sort that is literally broken. Any case, go down. Go up. Go down. What's that? Something is rolling on the floor. This is... The broken remains of the female doll. But how? What happened? With the pain from the curse and the agitation from the surprise, my head's about to burst. Calm down. Just calm your ass down. So I say to myself over and over again. Then inspect the broken female doll. Her limbs are missing. Only her head, dress and some broken pieces remain. When I look closer at the broken pieces, I see something resembling teeth marks. It's most likely from a bite. I should devour by the departed. The departed grew stronger after devouring the doll, which turned the lights in special building red. Really makes sense, but... If my deduction is correct, then this doll is supposed to be the departed. That said, the departed is quite clever, so there might be some ulterior motives behind this move. I hear a faint voice. It is a doll's voice. Take me. Emmy. What do I want to say? Eat. Eat me. Her voice goes silent. What did the female doll say? Take me. Eat me to protect you from the red curse. I still don't get it. However, she is the departed and the departed is very cunning. This could be some kind of ruse. There's no need for me to hear her words. Oh. The malicious disturbance that was happening in this place was subsided. Makes me feel a little bit better. Is it because the female doll is broken? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I just push ahead, okay. Climb the ladder once again. Where would this ladder take me this time? Will I end up climbing the tower, the clock tower, for our eternity without an exit? My mind conjures up someone, numerous ominous projections like this, one after the other. Except I know that can be how it ends. What the Departed wants is a wedding ceremony, and a groom is needed for that to happen. Cassie's Lord is likely a vertical wedding aisle, and waiting for me at the end will be my bride. Oh. Find myself in a bright red room. The stone walls and floors are covered with red mold. There are strange plants growing on the floor that looks like overgrown moss. A sight that you've never seen in nature. Did the departed cause this paranormal phenomenon? This is going longer than I thought it would. I thought it would just give me a bad end, but it's going for a really long time now. There's an altar in the middle of the room. There's an altar that would be the center of the western style wedding. This would be the end of my walk without the altar then. I take notice, I take the notice out and check it. In the red writing hall, please call the name of your bride who is hiding in school. In the red writing hall, please call the name of your bride who is hiding in school. This must be the red writing hall. 
Red, 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 blah, blah, blah. Then she called it a part by the name they've been using at school. Right, the very name I have guessed. I wonder if that's the reason why they want me to call them by their name here. After the part wishes to have a groom that really knows every single thing about his prize. Everything, even the terrifying secrets. The father who has been hiding Konohara Academy. Your real name is... Michio Kinokawa, Himeko Doryu, and the female doll. Now wait a goes through the room. There's no answer at all. Only the heavy silence filling the air. This is the ruins filling with molds. It's getting hard to breathe. To breathe, whatever. Good lord. You did not get it. No. I was wrong. I believed in you. What a shame, dear husbands. I hear a voice from behind me. And when I turn around... C G C G C G C G C G. We are not my real husbands. Still, I love you. Let us exchange a brief vow. Can I bite you? Oh, there we go. Ah, this is... Oh. This is... Um, thank you, dear husband. Goodbye. When you choose to start a new game, and the game is giving you like, oh, this game contains uh, scary imagery and stuff and whatever the hell. He's still going. A course was discovered. Severe injuries all over the body, bite marks. What's that? Something's rolling on the floor. This is... The red doll. A gasp. The broken remains of the female doll. Ow, what happened? With the pain from the curse and the agitation from the surprise, my head is about to burst. Calm down. Let's calm your ass down. So I say to myself over and over again. Then inspect the broken female doll. Her limbs are missing, only her head, dress, and some broken pieces remain. When I look closely at the broken pieces, I see something resembling teeth marks. This is most likely from a bite. I should have vowed by the departed. The departed grew stronger after devouring the doll, which turned the lights in the special building red. Does make sense. 
I hear a faint voice. This is the doll's voice. Take me. Add me. What do you want to say? Eat me. Protect you from red curse. That voice goes silent. What did the female doll say? Take me. Eat me to protect you from the red curse. I still don't get it. However, this doll mustered all of their remaining strengths to just say that to me, so I can't ignore her words. I better take her corpse with me. Obtain a red dress. The malicious disturbance is also happening in this place has subsided. Makes me feel a bit better. It is out thanks to this female doll. Very suspicious spider being. Okay. The fragments of the female doll are scattered on the floor. It means to protect you from the red curse. What does this mean? Climb the ladder. This ladder take me this time, but then another climbing the clock tower, but then it's without an exit. A mind conjures up numerous ominous predictions like this, one after the other. Except I know that can be how this ends. What did a part of wants is a wedding ceremony, and a groom we needed is for that to happen. That this ladder is like a vertical wedding aisle, and waiting for me at the end will be my bride. It's like a scene straight out from Bloodborne. Find myself in a bright red room. The stone walls and stone walls and floors are covered with red bolts. There are strange planes growing on the floor that okay. Looks like grow overgrown moss. Aside that only there you'll never see nature. The departed cause this paranormal phenomenon. There's an altar in the middle of the room. It's an altar that would be the center of a western style wedding. This will be the end of my walk to the aisle then. I'll I take the notice out and check it. And uh, after that it's in the red wedding hall. Please please call the name of your bride who is hiding in school. Your beloved the departed. In the red wedding hall. Please call the name of your bride who is hiding in school. This place must be the red hat red blah, 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 blah. Then she'll call the departed by the name they've been using at school. Right, the very name I have guessed. I wonder if there's a reason why they want me to call by the name here. Perhaps the departed wishes to have a groom that really knows every single thing about his bride. Everything, even the terrifying secrets. The departed has been hiding in Konohara Academy. Your real name is... Michio Kinokawa and Himeko Doryu. A voice echoes through the room. There's no answer at all, only the heavy silence filling the air. I expected nothing less from you, my dear husbands. I believed in you. Oh, hi. Two people appear before my eyes. Doryu. Michiko. I was hoping I was wrong. However, my guess was on the mark. Dear husbands, we've been watching you while hiding in the school the whole time. Dear husbands, we tested you to see if you are worthy of being a real husband or not. One of them some dead, their eyes are lifeless. They don't look like the Dorian Micho I came to know. You two are. The departed brides, the Mayamura sisters, Micho and Michio, Mi Mimiko, Miki, Mikiko, and Michio Mi What the hell are those names? Right, sisters, what's the key to unlocking the truth? 
that her father wasn't just one entity hiding on the school, it was two. Our proof that Michiho was the departed, which means that the person who received the curse at the same time, would also be the departed. Doryu, being that the mark on her face is displaying the evidence that she indeed did a that she is indeed a departed as well. Then are you are you the ones who cause other spirits to appear? That is correct. So the spirit that saw clean in Doryu's back was fake. The groom only needs his bride, the bride only needs her groom. Everyone else is unnecessary. If they are allowed to keep using the dead to cause more casualties, the damage will be incalculable as their victims become new spirits. More and more people will die until the bride and groom are all that remain. That's the ending that a part of desires. I have to stop this twisted madness at any cost. Dear husband, I've shown us your brilliant intelligence. You managed to learn the truth about us without being deceived by sympathy or fake deaths. The husbands have shown us impeccable lineage. With your bloodline, you are able to see, hear, and face the spirits. The husbands, you have shown us your stunning personality. Having formed an emotional bond with us brides, you mustered up the courage to push through your funeral for us. You're not like those weak, fragile, beheaded men are the cowards who fled from the notice. You're different from those fake grooms. Dear heavens, you truly are a real husband. What are you gonna do to me? We are the departed brides and groom. Let us exchange our marriage vows in this red wedding hall and spend our days in this Mushikabi chamber forevermore. That is the happy ending we long for. But, Mikiko, your husband looks delicious. I can't control myself anymore. Dear husband, can I bite you? What the hell? Michiho's face changes before my eyes. How terrifying. Is this the part that's true form? Wanna bite? I wanna bite husband. Every time she speaks, the insects coming out of her mouth moves their legs. What is that black li liquid dripping from her mouth? Is that her saliva? Does she sees me as food? I'm completely disoriented. My mind can process everything before me. I feel like the last thing thread of my sanity is going to snap. Do not rush, Michio. We must exchange vows first. Days, weeks, and months from now, our husband body shall be dyed, we Muki shall be blood, Mushikabi. His organs shall be infested with molds, and he'll be filled with insects, making him beautiful. We need to wait until that time, alright? Wanna bite! Bite! What a troublesome child. <laughs> Dear husband, you are a bad man. Because you really do look delicious. Dear husband. <laughs> Can I bite you? Oh wow. The mark on Doryu's face starts spreading like molds, distorting her face. And that insightful look on her face is supposed to be joy. I'm quaking in fear just looking at her. I can't even muster a scream. Want to bite. Want to bite. Okay. They can no longer control the ravenous hunger. The figures of two brides who longed for a wedding are long, longer here. Instead, what I'm seeing now are two long dead spirits who are wrapped in madness. Is that my dog's barking? It is. Mikiko, shall we bite in together? Michio, let us bite him together. 
dirty on Michio. Look at each other. They they hug one another. The arms and legs intertwine, body pressed up against body, sticking like glue. After repeating the same motion several times, the boundary between the two disappear and they have united into one. Look, dear husbands, look at us, we have consumed the scarlet marionette. Okay. Hello. What is that? Huh. It's almost worse. And when the candlestick is released. Ah, uh, that is... God dang it. Your husband. Am I beautiful now? No, you suck ass. Uh, my mind and body are overwhelmed by fear, like I'm a toad being hypnotized by serpents. The Rapata has gained a new form for the swirling red molds. A grotesque looking demon coming out of a doll's bulging belly. I can feel the intense emotion as the four eyes stare down at me. And the emotion is desire. The scarlet desire to devour their beloveds and usher them to their demise. Can I? It's even possible to save them. Dear husband, let me bait all of you in the color of insects. A flood of insects issue forth from the mouth and assault me. This keeps up, I'll be eating alive by bugs. But I can't give up here. What should I do? What should I do to fight the departed? Um, I mean, it is bugs. Oh, towards the insects? I hold up the dried up frog to cover myself from the attacking bugs. Mm -hmm. The moment I lay my hand on the frog, I remember what that voice told me earlier. Frogs drive away bugs. This might work then. The departed sneers as the insects put forward an attack. But then the insects disperse into the darkness to avoid the frog. It's like, what's the right choice? The repairer shrieks in anger upon seeing the insects leave. They seem to be muttering something. What the heck are they saying? Bugs? No, it's in mold. Just as I think that to myself, a sharp pain runs through my arm. Oh. Mold starts growing on my arm. Ah, so now they're going with mold, huh? I can feel the mold spreading through my body. I feel like vomiting. Dear husband, let me bait you in the color of mold. Get consumed by mold at this rate. No time to sit around. Into the something before this dead mold covers my whole body. Except I don't really have an idea what I need to do. Let's believe that I clue somewhere, because if I don't do something, I'll be dead. How do I protect myself from spreading molds? Uh, lick a bit of it. No, cover the arms in mold. 
I try putting the bleach under the mold growing on my arm. Lick a bit of it. Bleach is usually used to get rid of molds. That being said. Mm -hmm. Contrary to my expectations, the party simply sneers and a sharp pain hits me on my arm twice as hard as the first time. Oh, is it actually leaking? Neither the mold nor this now just fitting shows any sign of baiting. Okay. Ah, nah, nah. Wait. Hit a little bit. Grab any female doll's head or try eating a piece of it. The moment I lay my hand on the doll's broken veins. I remember what that voice said at that time. Eat me to protect you from the red curse. A little bit nervous, I quietly take a bite of the female soul's head. Surprisingly mushy. It's an unpleasant sensation like I'm chewing on a stone. Then a clay texture and taste starts spreading inside my mouth. Thinking on my mind, I swallow it down. At that moment, both the molds and the unpleasant nausea disappear in an instant. It's the right choice. The departed sounds distraught after seeing both the insects on the mold clear the way. Lying out of the road, they approach me. They're gonna eat me now. Can I bite you? My beloved husband. Let me bite you. Here we go again. The departed won't e ever be satisfied till they kill me. Although, if the Mayomura sisters are the departed, do they really want my death? The Mayomura sisters long for a blissful marriage. Tell me. This bloody ritual can't be the dream wedding that you always wanted. What is it that you really want? Dear husband. Is that the answer? It sounds sad. Right at that moment I hear something distant from the darkness shrouding my vision. Give it back. That voice just now. I give it back, do you mean? <laughs> Shit, it's not working, huh? I'm pretty sure the voice just now was to the party's true feelings, but they return to being their mad monster now. You guys really can communicate with the spirits, huh? But at least I got a clue now. I might be able to save the departed so using a clue. There's something I need to give back to them. It's probably something I used to a celebration, given that it's a wedding. What should I do to save the departed soul? Uh Blast the dress. Uh, put it on the departed. Pulling out the red dress. Oh, no, no, no. no. Oh, it might actually be, but that is another thing, though. Now, for the dress and call out the departed. Come close, allow me to put this dress on you. Dear husband. They weigh on insects from pouring out of the body. Okay, it wasn't that. Immediately hold up the dried frog to repair the insects so the frog ends up damaged. Is 
It's not only the last the happiness and my amor sisters is supposed to receive. A wedding is an occasion where the bride is celebrated. What should I do as the groom? Um, I goes no, he doesn't fully go quiet. Um, what was it? So this one. Residents of the town forgot the ceremony procedures, the chin and no. The United Ceremony M Town, the two grooms shall present the brides with red threads and smear lipstick on their teeth. Ceremony is unique to M Town, but silk one soft flowers flourish. Okay. The minion ink smear onto the parted teeth. Open the Vermilion Ink container and try to apply it to the father's teeth. Deep on my fingers the Vermilion Ink, I call it to the pot. I'm in painted teeth red. Oh. Okay, it's not that yet. Present it carefully. You present the thread and then we use the ink. Holding the dress with both hands, I get down to my knees and offer it to the other parties. She'll give you this dress. The medium thread. Give. Give. The departed mother something with a smile. Did they just tell me to give them the vermilion thread? I'm pretty sure this dress is made of red silk thread, so it should fit the bill. They just turn a custom during the real wedding. So you the celebration you want. The departed stares at me in silence. They seem so much bewildered. I guess this evidence that he stirs something in their hearts. The departed takes a slow, deep breath. He asks the departed longs to experience a traditional M Town wedding ceremony. Remember the true vows you long for. Did a part starts breathing heavily? Did that trigger a memory or something? Let another roar they approach me. I get with this. Shit, guess that's not it. The Rapata has gone insane once again. They're on the verge of devouring me. However, there is one way I can no way I could give up here. Think damn it. This must be something I can still do. Why did the party probably wants a traditional wedding? I believe the groom usually gives something to the brides. But it's still not enough. What else should I do? Permanent ink. Smear on their teeth. Open the Vermilion Ink container, okay, okay, okay. Deep in my fingers, the Vermilion Ink, I call out the departed. Let me paint your teeth red. I feel like the departed isn't as deranged as they were before. Now is the time. I nervously extend the fingers of Code of Vermilion Ink towards the departed. This is what is reading the Chief's Priest note of Adam Barak Mushikabi. At the wedding ceremony is in M Town. The groom is supposed to give the bride Vermilion threads and paint her teeth red. All the M Town brides are overjoyed to be on the receiving end of this traditional practice. Wasn't what I've got a dress? Wasn't what I've got? A dress made of red silk threads. Would equate to giving the bride vermilion threads. And it's meaning red ink on the teeth aligns with the paints in the teeth red with lipstick. So if I were to do that now, I gently smear the vermilion ink on the departed's teeth, giving them a blessing. 
The departed, this is the blessing that I, your groom, give to you. My bride! After a long silence, the lips curved into a smile. Then... Dear husband, for so long... For so, so long... For... You... Me... Oh, oh, I forgot. After muttering such a thing. The departed disappears with a cry that is oddly neither filled with love nor hatred. Does that is the right choice? Should be good. What is it? The departed regain their last blessing so they can find and rest in peace. Really hope that's the case. However, a cold wind refuses to stop blowing through the gaping hole in my heart. Doryu. Michiho. For a while, simply stand rooted to the spots, stunned and distraught. Then anything about the way those go simply disappear without regaining the consciousness. I remember the look on their faces when that happens. They were smiling for some reason. It's time to go. Now that I've managed to survive this ordeal somehow, there are some things that I must do. As I descend, I notice that the red handprints on the wall have now vanished. I assume that all the other strange phenomena have ceased after their body's departure. The clock tower is frozen in time, but the hands will move ever again, because the two students who wanted to make that happen for the school's 7th anniversary are no longer with us. Better get out of here, Yasuoka is waiting for me. Miku Komayomura, Rimichi Omayomura. I shall let Soka know how this case ended. One last save for good luck. Man, this is long. I was prepared for a long chapter, but man. Half of it is me messing around, half of me, me just testing things. I, I, I can take some blame for the longness. I come back, Yashiki. The spirit of us possessing Ahsoka is gone now, and the lights in the firmament is no longer red. Is it over? Yeah. You did well. Why is Doryu? you? Yashiki. Yasuoka looks at me with gentle eyes. She then follows with a slight snowy nod. Things happened, I see. Just tell me whenever you're ready. No rush. I'm sorry. You want me to answer that? No, it's fine. I'll do it. Hello? Try being a bit more cheery, will ya? Some more tone on these harsh words. You're alive, master. Yep, I failed to die. I lost my phone, so I couldn't call it. Took me a while to find a working public phone. Thank God you managed to escape. I was sprinting through the damn forest so hard I wanted to puke the whole time. They almost caught my ass several times, but luckily for me, they disappeared midway through the chase. They probably decided to be with their husbands rather than playing tag with me. 
How did it go in your end? It's over. The departure has finished. Oh. Okay then. Did you just save the departed? I think so. I think I did. Then why do you sound like you're at a funeral? Fuck the fuck up, man. Mission accomplished. You should be proud of yourself. How about the things you approve for doing what you needed to be done? Sorry, but I'm not really in the mood for that. Yeah, not surprised at all. I'm heading there now. Give me the details once I'm there. Bye. I was smashed though, wasn't it? I'm glad he's safe and sound. He said he's coming here. Shall we leave once he arrives then? You should rest, Yashiki. I'll contact the headmaster for you. Thanks, Yasoka. I'm touched by Yasoka's thoughtfulness. Since the last scene is still so vivid in my mind, I don't think I can deliver professional reports to the headmaster right now. By the way, Yashiki, why are you holding on to that? Oh, you mean this? I hadn't even realized it, but I'm clutching something I picked up on the clock tower. It's the female doll's head and dress. They saved my life. No particular reason. The image is feeling sentimental. の空を冷たい秋の風が吹き抜けるその夜誰もいない学園から鳴り響く鐘を何人かの近隣住民が耳にした鐘の音は他が彼にも愛する者と亡き者たちに柔らかな日がさすその日まで。Achievement. Oh. It's not going to show because I don't have the overlay up. May your stem souls rest. Oh, I'm on top of the lyrics. I'm gonna let it play. Um, lunch is probably getting done by now. I'm gonna let it. Let me actually place me back there. I'm just gonna disappear. Mute. Mute the mic.
Tomorrow, that's you know, get out of my kitchen. 